ओम ज्ञान चिरंधस्ञानजन शलाकाय चक्षुर्मीलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम Today we are reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace A C Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Chapter Eighteen, Texts Seventy Two to Seventy Eight. These are the last verses of Bhagavad Gita, and considering that Bhagavad Gita means the song of God or the instruction given by the supreme personality of Godhead Krishna, then actually, in one sense, Bhagavad Gita is finished. Krishna has given his instruction to Arjuna, and these are the concluding words. Text seventy-two is the last verse of Krishna's actual speaking. He says to Arjuna, "Kachide chachchutang partha tvayai ka grena chetasa kachida gyana samoha pranastaste dhananjaya." O son of Prita, O conqueror of wealth, have you heard this with an attentive mind, and are your ignorance and illusions now dispelled? So these are the last words of Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. He's not really giving any instruction, but he just wants to check with Arjuna if Arjuna feels satisfied that yes, now I understand. I I was in illusion. Arjuna requested Krishna. To become his spiritual master, to become his spiritual guru, to remove the illusion and doubt that were troubling his heart. So now, succinctly, Lord Krishna has explained the whole gamut of spiritual knowledge. Lord Krishna has explained who he, the supreme personality of Godhead, is. What is Arjuna's relationship and the relationship of every jiva or soul with him? What is the material world? How is it manifested? Why and how we are suffering in this material world? How to get out of it? The uh, nature of the liberated soul, the nature of the conditioned soul, the nature of the demoniac person, the nature of the divine person. All this has been explained in Bhagavad Gita. How it all links together. And now Krishna is asking Arjuna that so now you understand your mind is clear; it's not filled with doubt any more. Lord Krishna, as an ideal guru, was ready to explain everything to Arjuna again if he so desired, or any points that he needed clarifying more. Actually, the knowledge that's given here in Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all spiritual knowledge, and to Understand any particular points in detail, we can go on to read the Srimad Bhagavatam, which again explains all the essence of spiritual knowledge. But the Srimad Bhagavatam does so in great detail. But there's no time because Arjuna is about to fight a great war, which is itself the subject of a great narration in the Mahabharat, and so Arjuna. Uh, recognizing this, uh, doesn't ask for any more instruction, but says to Krishna, "This is text seventy-three. Arjuna Uvacha, Nashto Moha Smriti Labha, Tat Prasadan Maya Chuta, Sitosmi Gata Sandeha, Karishan, Karishe Vachanam Tava." Arjuna said, "My dear Krishna, O infallible one, my illusion is now gone." I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt, and am prepared to act according to your instructions. So this should be the result of reading Bhagavad Gita, or hearing Bhagavad Gita from a bona fide guru, that one should be free from doubt. One should know clearly what is his duty, what he is supposed to do, what he is not supposed to do, and. The result of all this is that one should be prepared to follow Krishna's instructions. If after hearing Bhagavad Gita, one is in doubt whether or not Krishna is supreme, one is in doubt whether or not his duty is to serve Krishna, then he hasn't understood Bhagavad Gita. For this is indeed the message of Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna recognizes this. And says that now my illusion is destroyed. 
by Krishna's clear instruction, Arjuna's doubt is destroyed. And if we have actually understood Bhagavad Gita, then we should be in the same position as Arjuna, that I am now free from doubt and I am prepared to execute Krishna's instruction. Of course, to be as qualified as Arjuna to understand Bhagavad Gita in just one sitting, that's not very common. We find that there are even many great scholars who know many verses of Bhagavad Gita, but they haven't understood the purport clearly, and therefore there are so many additions and so many interpretations of Bhagavad Gita. But if we understand Bhagavad Gita clearly, without any personal speculation, if we accept Krishna's words as they are, then we can follow in the footsteps of Arjuna. And although it may take us many lifetimes to understand what Bhagavad Gita is in full, we can immediately accept the essence and, like Arjuna, tell Krishna, Karishye Vachanam Tava, I am ready to follow your instructions. So, the uh, conversation between Krishna and Arjuna is finished, and the next few verses uh, bring an end to this section of the Mahabharat, which is known as the famous Bhagavad Gita. There are a few words of Sanjay, who is narrating this to Dhritarashtra, and Sanjay is expressing his appreciation of Bhagavad Gita and of Krishna and of Arjuna. So Sanjay, in these last few verses, gives a clue to us how we should appreciate Bhagavad Gita. Text 74. Sanjaya Uvacha, Ityahang Basudeva Sya Parthasya Chamahat Manaha, Sangvadim Imam Ashrosham Advutam Romaharshanam. Sanjay said, Thus I have I heard the conversation of two great souls, Krishna and Arjuna, and so wonderful is that message that my hair is standing on end. So Sanjay is ecstatic. This is blissful to hear Bhagavad Gita. It's not some dry, boring philosophical discussion. But Bhagavad Gita is the science of knowledge of the soul, Atma Gyan. So this touches our heart. This knowledge, it's not simply some theoretical knowledge, but it directly links us, the Atma, with the Paramatma, who is called in this verse Mahatma, Sri Krishna. So Bhagavad Gita is an exposition of bhakti. And hearing this makes us ecstatic. How blissful to know that Krishna is our supreme friend and guide and master. Sanjaya is appreciating this and his hairs are standing on end. Vyasa Prasadaj Chutavan Etad Gyuhyam Mahang Param Yogam Yogeshwarat Krishnat Sakshat Kathayata Swayam By the mercy of the ass, I have heard these most confidential talks directly from the master of all mysticism, Krishna, who was speaking personally to Arjuna. So this is an important point, that Sanjay, even though he is, he was in this world at the same time as Krishna, and he was, that means he was directly seeing Krishna so many times, but he says that it is by the mercy of the ass that I have got the opportunity to hear and understand and repeat this message of Bhagavad Gita. So this is a very important point that we all require to attain the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita through the self-realized spiritual master who is the representative of the Asadev. Vyasa Prasadat's Chutavan. I heard this by the mercy of Vyas. So this Bhagavad Gita uh, was spoken 5,000 years ago by Krishna to Arjuna, and before that, maybe 40 or more million years ago, by Krishna to Vivaswan, the sun god. And Bhagavad Gita will go on being spoken in human society. And if we hear from a guru who is as good as Vyas, or as good as Krishna, then we will get the same result that Arjuna got from hearing directly from Krishna, and that result will be 
that all our illusion will be dispelled, we shall be free from doubt, and we shall be willing to follow the instruction of Krishna. This is the test of hearing Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is eternal teaching. It is never outdated. It is never outmoded. It is absolutely relevant to us in this world today, as relevant as it was to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra 5,000 years ago. And we can take full advantage of that knowledge if we are guided by a spiritual master who is as good as Sanjay or Vyas. Rajan Sangsmitya Sangsmitya Sangvadam Imam Adbhutam Keshavarjuna Yo Punyam Krishami Chat Muhur Muhuhu. Text 76 translation O King, Sanjay is addressing Dhritarashtra. As I repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna, I take pleasure being thrilled at every moment. So Sanjay heard Bhagavad Gita, he repeated Bhagavad Gita to Dhritarashtra, and he's constantly remembering the instructions of Bhagavad Gita and taking pleasure in that at every moment. So like this, Bhagavad Gita is not like some novel that you take, you read, you put it on the, on the shelf or you throw it away and you forget it. But Bhagavad Gita is essential instruction to be remembered at every moment, to be applied in our lives. And in this way, we can taste the nectar, the bliss of Krishna consciousness. Muhur muhuhu, repeatedly, again and again, at every moment. Text 77. Touch to Sangsmitya Sangsmitya Rupam Atyad Bhutang Hare He Vismeo Me Mahan Rajan Hrishyami Chapuna Punaha. O King, as I remember the wonderful form of Lord Krishna, I am struck with wonder more and more, and I rejoice again and again. So, uh, Sanjay is remembering how Lord Krishna has shown the Vishwarup, the universal form. Uh, he is particularly remembering this, how Krishna has displayed his a tremendous opulence, how the whole material world is non-different from him, is within him, and uh, particularly that form is being remembered again and again by Sanjay, whose conclusion is therefore, now is the last verse of Bhagavad Gita, Yatra Yogeshvara Krishna Yatra Parto Dhanadharaha Tatra Shriya Vijayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mama. Wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. That is my opinion. So Sanjay was remembering the universal form of Krishna, how he is the uh, summum bonum of everything. And as Lord Krishna has stated in Bhagavad Gita, Tejas Tejas Vinamaham Balam Balavatam Chaham that he is the power of the powerful. He is the strength of the strong. So, uh, Sanjay is relating to Dhritarashtra who is wondering, who will be victorious in this fight? My sons or the sons of Pandu? But Sanjay here is telling Dhritarashtra that there's no hope for your sons to be victorious, O King Dhritarashtra, because Krishna is on the side of the Pandavas. And wherever there is Krishna, there is certainly also morality, there is religiousness, there is opulence, and there is victory. So there is no hope for victory for those who go against Krishna, or those who neglect Krishna, or those who think that they can be successful without Krishna. On the other hand, just like the Pandavas, they may be apparently outnumbered, they may apparently be humiliated and disgraced, but in the end, they are always victorious, they are always successful, because Krishna is on their side. And also here Sanjay says that because... Uh, Krishna and the Pandavas, they were on the side of Dharma and Niti. He was pointing out that Duryodhana had take to, taken to immoral means to try to attain overlordship over the Pandavas. But the message here is that wrong means can never lead to ultimate success.
by adopting wrong means, one can apparently be successful for some time, but one will ultimately always be destroyed because God is good. Krishna is all good. Therefore, we should be good, which means we should follow the laws of Shastra and ultimate goodness means to surrender to Krishna. So, that's the Bhagavad Gita. This has been presented by Atma, this uh, series of talks on Bhagavad Gita. It's maybe symbolic that in the background the sun is just setting in the sea here at Dwaraka, the holy land of the Lord. But we shouldn't think that, well, the sun is set and everything is finished. Because we know that by the grace of the Lord, tomorrow the sun will rise again. So in the same way, it's not that we've finished Bhagavad Gita and now it's all over. But rather, every day we should read Bhagavad Gita as it is. And uh, I'm particularly recommending this Bhagavad Gita as it is. There are many editions of Bhagavad Gita and you might think it's sectarian of me or dogmatic to recommend this Bhagavad Gita as it is. But I'm recommending it not like a salesman or not because I have some personal interest, but because actually this particular edition of Bhagavad Gita represents or, or transmits exactly what Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, transmitted to Arjuna. And the proof of that is that Lord Krishna's ultimate instruction in Bhagavad Gita is manmana bhava mad bhaktaha, always think of me and become my devotee. In other words, Bhagavad Gita, although in Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna speaks of karma and jnana and yoga, ultimately Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Lord Krishna to teach us to always think of him and become his devotee. Bhakti, this is the message of Bhagavad Gita. So Srila Prabhupada, who is himself a param bhakta, a topmost devotee, he has come from the spiritual world and on the order of Lord Krishna, just like the order of Lord Krishna to Arjuna was to fight and defeat the Kauravas, so Lord Krishna's order to Srila Prabhupada was to present this knowledge of Bhagavad Gita as it is, and in this way, just as Lord Krishna destroyed the illusion and doubt of Arjuna, so Srila Prabhupada, through this edition of Bhagavad Gita as it is, destroys the illusion and doubt of anyone who is uh, humble enough and submissive enough to accept it. And the proof of that is that now all over the world, so many people, thousands and hundreds and thousands of people all over the world, by reading, understanding, and under the guidance of experienced devotees, uh, practicing in their lives the message of Bhagavad Gita as it is, are taking up the same path that Arjuna did. Arjuna said, we just read that, Nashto moha smritir labdha, tat prasadam nayachuta, sitosmigata sandeha, that people are becoming free from the doubts and illusion. People are understanding that, yes, I'm meant to serve Krishna. Krishna is a tutor. Krishna never falls down. Krishna is infallible. So if we follow his instructions in Bhagavad Gita, and his instruction is that we should act as he wants us to do. So if we do that, uh, as directed in Bhagavad Gita, and in all the books of bhakti, which are subsequent to Bhagavad Gita, then uh, we shall, like Arjuna, attain the ultimate success of life. So please read Bhagavad Gita as it is. There are many editions of Bhagavad Gita by various speculative philosophers who do not accept Lord Krishna's position as the supreme summum bonum absolute truth and who therefore, in presenting Bhagavad Gita, actually don't present Bhagavad Gita, because Bhagavad Gita means to understand Krishna 
as He is, and to understand ourselves as we are, as His eternal servants. So this message of Bhagavad Gita uh, can be derived by hearing it from the great devotee Srila Prabhupada. Uh, no doubt it's not the easiest of books. It's not, a, it's not like reading some cinema magazine. It's not like reading some light novel. It requires some dedication to go through this book. But the result of reading this book will be that our lives shall become perfect. This rare human form of life attained after many, many births is meant for attaining this topmost knowledge. Without this, life is simply spoiled. Life is simply wasted. And again, Murha Janmani Janmani. We have again and again to enter into species of life in which there is simply foolishness. So please don't be foolish like me. I have wasted so many millions of lifetimes without understanding Bhagavad Gita as it is. You please take this Bhagavad Gita, apply it in your life. Just you try. You read one verse every day with purport or a few pages every day. Make a sadhana. A sadhana means an established spiritual practice. You follow this every day. And if along with that you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You chant on beads this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. You just take this up. We just request you, take this up for a few days and just see what difference there is in your life. There's nothing to lose. We don't lose anything by following Krishna's instruction in Bhagavad Gita. But the gain is tremendous. The gain is inestimable. Even if we were to gain uh, the kingdom of the whole universe, but we don't understand Bhagavad Gita, our life is spoiled. But on the other hand, if we simply accept this instruction of Bhagavad Gita as it is and apply it in our lives, this life will be successful in the truest sense of the term. We will go to Krishna to live there eternally with him in his spiritual world. Jai Shri Krishna. All glories to Bhagavad Gita as it is. All glories to Srila Prabhupada who has kindly presented this knowledge to us. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama.